we have with us Dr. Matthew Kandathil, the practicing gastroenterologist who is having 30 years of experience in USA. Welcome to Media, Dr. Kandathil. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kandathil will throw light on hepatitis, a very dreadly disease and widespreading in a city of Mumbai. Uh, Dr. Kandathil, who grew up in Mumbai, yes. uh, moved to USA 30 years ago, but keeps coming back uh, with his wide experience. He interacts with doctors, sees patients. Uh, Dr. Kandathil, uh, what exactly is hepatitis C for a layman? Hepatitis. When, whenever you see the word itis, it means inflammation. Hepar is liver, so in this case, hepatitis means inflammation of the liver. So the causes of inflammation of the liver are many. Uh, it could be bacterial, it could be drug-induced, it could be viral, viral. For the sake of brevity, I'll stick to viral causes of hepatitis for this discussion. Otherwise, the topic is very, very exhausting. So viral hepatitis consists of an alphabet soup. In other words, you have hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, hepatitis A and E have something in common. They are both uh, transmitted by foodborne due to bad hygiene, and it's usually what we call a fecal-oral route. Uh, the good thing is, it does not give rise to chronic disease, but hepatitis A could be very fulminant and so can E be very fulminant and that can cause hepatic failure and patients can die. One of the nice things about hepatitis A is vaccines are available and for every resident of Mumbai who has not had a vaccine, I would urge them to get the vaccine to lessen the risk of getting hepatitis A. Currently, there's no vaccine to my knowledge for hepatitis E. So putting these two aside, let me concentrate on B, C, and D. Now, D and B are related in the sense that patients who have hepatitis B can only get hepatitis D. So let's talk about B and C. The common features of B and C is, are that they are spread by needle exposure or by uh, sexual contact, uh, by blood transfusions, by sharing razors, by having tattoos done with unsterilized equipment. Like needles. But like needles. And unfortunately, over here, there's such a thing called injectionism. That's a term coined for hepatitis B and C acquired from getting injections given by unscrupulous practitioners who, did not, who do not sterilize the needles or who are not using disposable needles. The days of sterilizing needles are long over and there should not be any case of hepatitis B or C as a result of injections. Unfortunately, this still happens. Now, hepatitis B has been around for, the, for a much longer period of time. The antigen was called Australia antigen. Hepatitis C, for the longest time, went under the name of non-A, non-B hepatitis. Hepatitis C was discovered sometime in the early 90s. Ever since then, blood transfusion, at least in the United States, has become safe and one does not get hepatitis C from receiving blood. Many other countries have been very slow to respond and right now the rate of hep C from blood transfusion in the United States is almost close to zero. What is the difference between hepatitis B and C? Besides the difference in the structure, which is it's probably a little complicated to explain to the layperson, the hepatitis B can give you chronic disease, so can hep C. But with hepatitis B, the likelihood of you getting rid of the antigen on your own without treatment is very high. With hepatitis C, 
there's this 20% rule. 20% of patients who develop hepatitis C go on to develop chronicity. That means they're chronic. 20% of the people who develop chronic hepatitis C go on to develop cirrhosis. And 20% of the patients with chronic hepatitis C with cirrhosis go on to develop hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma or cancer of the liver. Hepatitis B is also a source of hepatoma, but as I said before, it can be the body tends to get rid of hepatitis B a lot easier than hepatitis C. Why is that so? I, I, there's no real explanation as to why that happens, but hepat hepatitis B, the treatment for hepatitis B consists of medicines that you have to take for the rest of your life. Hepatitis B carriers it can still transfer the disease, especially women who get pregnant. There's something called vertical transmission. When the woman is pregnant, she can transmit the hepatitis B virus to the fetus and the baby is born with hepatitis B virus. In many Western countries, children are vaccinated at a very early age. So hepatitis B, B is becoming a thing of the past. In my own practice, I have very few patients with hepatitis B. The, the two or three of them are all from Asian countries who are immigrants to, to the United States. Most of the children today are vaccinated against hepatitis B, so we are seeing a tremendous decline in hepatitis B. But that's not to say the same thing about hep C. Hepatitis C is more prevalent than hepatitis B in the United States. It is also prevalent in, in India, and here too, children are being vaccinated. So the effect of vaccination of hepatitis B will be slow, but you will see it in the near future. Hepatitis C until recently was a deadly disease. Right now, if, you, if I were to choose between having hepatitis B and C, I would say I would rather have hepatitis C. Now, you may ask why. In November of last year, a certain drug came out for treatment of hepatitis C which is effective, if effectively cure 95 to 100% of the patients. This, in my opinion, is the discovery of this decade and of the last decade. Unfortunately, it did not receive much of publicity because of certain analysts, stock analysts thought that there was competition for this drug and therefore it did not get the the importance that it should have received. Until recently, the most common cause of cirrhosis of the liver in the United States was hepatitis C. The most common cause of transplantation in the United States has been hepatitis C. The treatment for hepatitis C, I've seen how it has evolved. About 15 years ago, the cure rate was about 10 to 20%. Side effects were galore. The duration of treatment, 48 weeks, which is almost a year. Then came other drugs, uh, a form of uh, interferon called peculated interferon, which is a long-acting interferon. The cure rate went up to 40%. Oh, we said, wow. Well, it was an improvement from 20 to 40%. Patients continued to have side effects. Patients were being treated for 48 weeks and then there was a recurrence rate. After discontinuing treatment, some of the patients used to come back reinfected with hepatitis C. Then about three years ago came a new set of drugs which brought the cure rate to 70%. That was godsend, I would say. But the side effects increased almost 50%. I remember being surveyed by a company as to what would be the ideal treatment for hepatitis C B. One was short duration of treatment, excellent cure rate, and very little side effect. I thought this was a pipe dream. 
come November of 2014 is when this drug came out. Uh, there is made by a company called Gilead Sciences. It's called Sovaldi. And then subsequently a drug came out which contains Sovaldi along with another drug and the new drug is called Harvoni. Now, what is the difference between these two drugs? Let me go back to hepatitis C. There are at least four or five subtypes or genotypes of hepatitis C. There's genotype 1, there's genotype 2, there's genotype 3, genotype 4. Now, in the United States, the most prevalent form of genotype is genotype 1. In India, the most prevalent genotype is genotype 3 in the northern India and genotype 1 in southern India. So the treatment is going to vary. Now, genotype 3 in 1 was the most difficult to treat before these drugs came out. Now, if you have a choice between having genotype 1, 2, and 3, it will be one that you should have. Why? The treatment with Harmony could be as low as six weeks. If somebody has a viral load, which is measured in millions, if a viral load is less than six million, the treatment duration is only six weeks. If the viral load is more than six million, the treatment is 12 weeks. And the cure rate is almost 95 to 100%. Now, with genotype 2 and 3, the 3 has become the most difficult and you have to give a combination of this drug Sovaldi with an old drug called Rivavirin for 24 weeks. But the cure rate reaches almost 98 to 100%, something that we could not have dreamt of even as recently as five years ago. So these drugs have come out and most of the, the, uh, the publicity that the drug got was it because of its cost. So all the had got this nickname of being a thousand dollar a day pill. Uh, Harmony is a little more expensive than that. Now there are all kinds of other treatments for various conditions which cost more than a thousand dollars. But this got this moniker, thousand dollar a day pill. But what it does is, with it, with, by spending, the, what we're talking about the cost in the United States, by spending about ninety thousand dollars, you get rid of a disease once and for all. If somebody gets hepatitis C and goes on to develop cirrhosis, even before you talk about transplantation costs, the cost for one admission to an ICU with gastrointestinal bleeding could be as high as 100,000. So there are several such admissions before you can even be considered for transplantation. Secondly, livers are not available off the shelf. You could die before you get a liver. So the ideally, if you can get rid of this, this, this virus, you prevent cirrhosis, you decrease the incidence of liver cancer, and you don't need transplantation. So hepatitis C in the United States is going to be a thing of the past, uh, genotype 1, 2, and 3. Dr. Matthew, you just mentioned about these two drugs available in the US. Uh, what about the situation in India? Uh, will a common man, a layman, get the access of these drugs? Uh, will the disease be cured? Yes. The drug is going to co cost a fraction of the price in the United States. At the price they sell in the United States, nobody can afford anywhere else. Even in the United States, as recently as yesterday, I found out that this, there's something called a sticker price and then the actual price. Many of the insurance companies are demanding a deep, deep discount anywhere from 40 to 50 percent. So the actual price of the drug is down by 50 percent. Even at that price, one cannot afford in, in India. 
So Gilead Sciences, which makes this drug, from what I understand, has licensed three or four companies in India to manufacture this drug at a fraction of the price. If I told you it would cost about $2,000 for something that costs almost $164,000. $2,000 for one drug or the set of drugs? For the $2,000 for the entire treatment, 24 weeks of treatment for genotype 3. For genotype 1, it's going to cost a fraction of that. Maybe $900 or $1,000. So you convert that into rupees, it'd be about 62,000 rupees uh, or for, um, for 12 weeks or 1 lakh 40, sorry, 1 lakh uh, 28,000 uh, rupees, 24,000 rupees for 24 weeks of treatment. I know that's expensive, but the consequences of not treating that is tremendous. So I suspect that these manufacturers will be making the drugs not just for the Indian market, but also for the Egyptian market, which is very, very large. For all you know, drugs from here will also go to Southeast Asia and maybe even to China. So these pharmaceutical companies that are going to be licensed to make these drugs in India are going to be making a fortune from sales not only in India, but in Egypt, Southeast Asia, and maybe even China. I don't think Gilead Science is going to give licenses for this drug to be manufactured in China. How does one find out if uh, he or she has contracted hepatitis C? What, are, what is the test? There is a blood test where you look for antibodies to hepatitis C. Okay, before the test, how, are there any symptoms of hepatitis C? Very often, patients are completely asymptomatic. Patients develop inflammation of the liver and what we call as antitrich hepatitis. In other words, they don't get jaundiced. A very small percentage of patients get jaundiced and once somebody gets jaundiced, then naturally one uh, works them up for hepatitis B, C, A, E, you know, the entire alphabet soup. But unfortunately, there could be people walking around who have hepatitis C and they don't know. In the United States, anybody born between 1945 and 1965 needs to be screened, no matter whether they have symptoms or no symptoms. The reason being that a lot of patients in the United States have hepatitis C and they're not even aware of. So this particular group of individuals were probably the flower children of the 60s where it was, you know, drugs and rock and roll. So they need to be screened and anybody who's had been to prison, who uses IV drugs, who has had homosexual sex, and or somebody who's been transfused before 1996 needs to be checked for hepatitis C. Similarly, there are patients who have certain conditions like hemophilia, who constantly get blood products, they need to be checked. Somebody who's on dialysis, they automatically get checked. So there is a group of individuals who are screened otherwise. But if somebody has donated blood in the recent past and their blood has been accepted, they can be rest assured that they do not have hepatitis C, they do not have HIV, they do not have uh, hep, uh, hep, hepatitis B. Because when one donates blood, they run a whole battery of tests before the recipient gets it. There are myths uh, in the minds of people that, you know, if I shake hands with a person who's having hepatitis, I contract the disease, or if I share the meal, or I sleep in the same bed with the patient, I contract the disease. Uh, just clear, just uh, clear the point about these myths. Foodborne hepatitis, which I earlier alluded to, hepatitis A and E can be spread by by food and by sh possibly by shaking hands. But when we talk about hepatitis B and C, which are spread through intravenous use, or where there has to be exchange of bodily fluids or blood. 
by shaking hands with that individual, you do not get hepatitis B or C. By sleeping in the same bed, you, know, or you, would, you would not get hepatitis C, nor if you eat from the same plate. Uh, the, if somebody is in a sexual relationship, the, as I said before, the likelihood of getting hepatitis C in a monogamous relationship is very, very, very small. Whereas in hepatitis B, it can be transmitted through sex. So hepatitis C, the likelihood of the average person having hepatitis C is very, very small unless he's had uh, blood transfusions, has used drugs, had sex with somebody who may have uh, hepatitis C. So if somebody's had, had sex with a prostitute, you don't know what the person has. So such a person also needs to go and get checked. But a individual who has never been involved in any form of risky behavior, he or she does not have to be afraid of checking, looking for hepatitis C. We've heard through reports that uh, the drugs which cure hepatitis C are soon going to be available in India. Can you throw some light on it? From what I've heard from reliable sources is that these drugs will be available in the next few months. I had been warehousing my patients for the past year and a half. What that means is I did not treat a single patient with hepatitis C for the past month and a half, or year and a half, I'm sorry waiting for the arrival of these drugs. And sure enough, I'm calling them one by one and treating them. I'm sure that the gastroenterologists and hepatologists in this country have been warehousing their patients because the treatment, the previous treatment, carried a lot of side effects. And the cure rate with this current generation of drugs is just phenomenal. And the side effects is like taking candy. I mean, that would be an exaggeration. but that's how good it is, especially with the drug Harmony. Don't forget with Sovaldi, you still have to take the old drug Ribavirin, which has some side effects as far as uh, decreasing your blood count and things like that go. But this Harmony, which is a drug which is going to be used for genotype 1, has almost little or no side effects with an excellent cure rate. And this is something which is just earth shattering as far as I'm concerned for a disease that used to be quite disastrous. Now uh, you've found a cure and unfortunately it hasn't received the accolades that it should have received. Thank you Dr. Matthew for sharing the light. Uh, we had Dr. Matthew with us giving us an in-depth about hepatitis C clearing the myths and giving the vast knowledge about the disease, the cure, and also giving us this good news that drugs are soon going to be available in India. With camera person TK Shriji, this is Apurva Bhatt for Media in Mumbai.